Welcome to this video about configuring VLANs and Oracle Linux systems using the Network Manager CLI and IP utilities. As the number of systems attached to a network increases, it becomes necessary to group systems to better administer large numbers of machines, more efficiently manage available address ranges, and better manage the amount of broadcast traffic being generated and taking up bandwidth in your network. VLANs, or Virtual Local Area Networks, allow the network to be divided into smaller logical groupings of systems. A VLAN is multiple machines separated into a logical group that can communicate as though they are attached to the same network, regardless of their actual physical location on the broadcast LAN. VLAN tags are used to identify the separate VLAN networks, with network switches deciding how to route traffic within and between systems based on the VLAN tags. So let's go to the terminal of our system and create a VLAN interface. In this demonstration, we are using an Oracle Linux system created in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. We will first create a VLAN interface using the Network Manager CLI or NMCLI command, and follow that by creating a similar interface using the IP command. Note that VLAN interfaces created with the NMCLI utility will still be present after a system reboot, However, VLAN interfaces created with the IP command do not persist after a reboot. First, let's view the current network interfaces on our system with the sudo nmcli device command. We see there are four devices, ENS3, 5, 6 and 7, with ENS5, 6 and 7 currently unused and disconnected. We will use some of these as parent devices for the VLAN interfaces we will create today. With the command sudo nmcli connection add type vlan we create a vlan connection named vlan10-con with an interface name vlan10-if which uses the ethernet device ens5 and tags its traffic with the vlan id 10. note that the vlan id must be within the range of 0 to 4094. looking at the nmcli device list again we see the new vlan10-if device and connection called vlan10-con. Its state is connecting as the default is for the new VLAN interface to use Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP, to acquire its IP setting. Viewing the new connection information with the sudo nmcli connection command, we also see its UUID. Next, we want to manually configure an IP address for the VLAN device. If we want to use this VLAN device only as a port for other devices, we would not need to set an IP. When configuring manual IPv4 address settings, we can set a static IPv4 address, network mask, default gateway, and DNS server to the VLAN connection. In this demonstration, we will only assign an IP address. We set the IP address with the command sudo nmcli connection modify and use the ipv4.addresses option. To change the default DHCP setting, we use the ipv4.method option with the manual setting. Command options are also available to set the gateway and DNS addresses. Note that similar options are also available to set for IPv6 address options. And we see the IP address assigned with the sudo ipaddr command. If we needed to raise its connection state up, we use the command sudo nmcli connection up and identify the VLAN connection name. Note also that if the parent device ENS5 is down, it will prevent the VLAN device from coming up. If we need to raise the state of the parent link, you can use the sudo IP link set ENS5 up command. We can view the information about the configured VLAN interfaces by looking at the interface configuration files in the slash proc slash net slash VLAN directory. Viewing the directory with the ls-l command, we see a config file and vlan10-if file. Looking at the config file, we see it contains the vlan name, its ID, and associated device. Looking at the contents of the vlan10-if file, we see counts for transmitted and received frames and bytes, and any traffic priority settings for the traffic in and out of this device. With the vlan created, we can now look at removing a vlan interface. First, deactivate the connection by setting its state down with the sudo nmcli connection down command. We verify the connection is down with the sudo ipaddr commands, which show the device not listed anymore. The IP interface is gone, but the connection information is still present, as we see with the sudo nmcli connection command. We delete the VLAN connection with the sudo nmcli connection delete command, and verify again it's been removed with the 
sudo nm cli connection command. Now we will use the IP command to create a VLAN interface. Note that VLAN interfaces created using the IP command do not persist after a reboot of the system. Run the IP link command to identify the existing network devices. We create the VLAN interfaces using the sudo IP link add command and set the physical device used as ENS6 this time. The interface name as VLAN 11 IF and the connection type is VLAN and set a VLAN ID of 11. Rerun the IP link command to view the new device. This time we assign the IP address to the interface with the sudo IP ADDR add command, set the address and mask, and identify the configuration to be for the new VLAN interface. We raise the state of the VLAN interface with the command sudo IP link set VLAN 11 IF up. We verify the connection is up and has an IP address assigned with the commands IP link sudo nmcli connection and IP addr. To delete the VLAN using the IP command, we first set the state of device down with the command sudo IP link set VLAN 11 IF down and run the sudo IP link delete command to delete the VLAN interface. We verify the connection is gone with the sudo nmcli connection command and view the slash proc slash net slash VLAN directory to see the configuration file for the VLAN interface is gone. So that's how to create and remove VLANs on an Oracle Linux system using the NMCLI and IP utilities. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>